Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast here with Benji as always. And this show is supported by Lacole for the recaps of quickly stages three and then four of Tour de Pologne and the ladies tour of Norway stage one. It's a complete file on podcast players and then we release them as separate videos on YouTube. So if you want to get, say, with our Vuelta preview, we get them up on podcast players with Mega Transfers podcast much quicker but just to recap, stage three of Tour de Pologne, which we missed yesterday because of that Vuelta preview, it was a sprint stage 226 kilometers Crazy. long. So long for a one-week stage race. And uh, Fernando Gaviria got his first win, first World Tour win in quite a while, beating Olaf Koy. Bauhaus got blocked. It was a German lockout, 3-4-5. Bauhaus, Kanter, Volscheid. Jonas Rickard, sixth. Hofstetter, then Schwarzmann, Kvietkowski, and Degenkolb. 10th. So four or five Germans in the top 10. Gaviria... Yeah, it's good to see him back winning. Uh, he's like one of the only people in the world that supposedly had, had COVID twice in the space of like six months. Poor guy. He's had a rough time of it. He's out of contract. Um, I probably still wouldn't be looking at giving him big money despite this win. Uh, it's not the strongest sprint competition, but Olaf Koy, Benji, you got a bit of a file on him. You keep files on these uh, yeah. Benelux talents. Can you maybe tell people who this lad is? Yeah, I checked in my locker and there was a file on Olaf Koy, so <laughs> let me read it out for you. Last year, he uh, started off at Yumbo um, development team he was still, and he was riding in small races, Conti races, but he came from juniors and was directly at the age of 18, destroying competition on Conti level. So when you do that, you've got talent. And together with Decker, they both came from that Jumbo development team and are now present in the Yumbo main team. But the difference between Decker and Koi is that Koi is only 19 right now. And Decker is obviously older at this point. I think 21, 22. And I think Decker is a bit more cobbly and has less of a uh, fierce sprint. While Koi does seem to have a bit more of that accelerative sprint going into an actual sprint. But hey, this year he started off relatively decent in cobble races. But in Tour de Hungary was sprinting top fives. And that was behind the likes of a, an Edward Turns, ahead of a Dupont Bauhaus, for example, Jordi Meus. And then you know, okay, this guy has talent. And to come after Gaviria here on this stage, almost winning. He came around just in the last corner, which was in the last 150 meters, which is not supposed to happen, but okay. And yeah, it was very close. Gaviria just came around in the end. And yeah, a decent lead out. He was brought to the, to the sprint just before the sprint started. And brought perfectly but just not good enough this time around but at the age of 19 you cannot really blame this guy he's got a bright future ahead of him normally so uh looking forward to see what else comes out of this guy definitely one to watch out for onto stage four not too much gc changing changes in stage three i think you'll see might have leapfrogged maurice johnson bonus seconds stage four more a mountain test now not high mountain though 161 k's long we have like five k's three and a half percent then 4.6 k's four percent the main climb is a long drag up to la Chanka. it says four k's of 5.3 percent but really they're climbing for like 15 kilometers plus it's just shallow gradients they do a descent and then a kick to the line one two k's at 7.3 percent it flattens out and then a kick up again it's not as hard as the finish that i made one the other day but it's again like quite you un- well, not unique, but it's just different. It's not straight climbing. There's descents, there's uh, rest periods, and then it kicks up again. It's an interesting finish to Bukovina Resort. And we had uh, I know we had a lot of races on today, Benji. I saw your man Volta was in the break uh, for FDJ, but they were kept on a pretty pretty tight leash. Uh, were, you, were you even watching the break? Benji's normally on break watch. Okay, yeah, okay. I watched uh, I watched the break a tiny bit, a tiny bit, okay. I was too busy watching the Tour of Denmark where Remco Evenepoel destroyed uh, the Danish field, basically, like crazy work there. And yeah, eventually I also won that stage, spoilers. But uh, we talk about the Tour of Poland here and the Tour of Poland alone, so let's not talk about it too much. Indeed, Falter in the breakaway, and uh, he dropped the breakaway on the first of these two final climbs. And I think in the peloton we saw both the Koenig and UE putting in some work. But what I found most intriguing was what happened after the first climb. We had them going into the descent. And obviously, Walter was just caught in that descent. And we saw some moves in the peloton. And it was more that Cavagnac came to the front, started hammering it with Honoré. But also, Girmay went to the front for a bit. 
as well and started hammering it and put the entire group on leash just after the descent, just before the start of the last climb, and then moved back again. So I guess he was doing that for a teammate. I was thinking Rota, but perhaps Quinton Hermans was also in that group. But then something weird happened. Cavani pace so hard that he had a bit of a gap together with Honoré on the group, and I think that put Almeida on a golden seat. You know, they've got 20 nah, nah, meters. Come on. Come on. Okay. Go ahead. Cavagna and Honoré attacking João Almeida, trying to take the leader's <laughs> jersey off him because he's going to UAE next year. It's not a reverse lead out at all. <laughs> that's, how you could, that's how you could spin it. Um, before we get to the finish, measure another word on our show partner, Lacole. They produce performance cycling apparel. We'll have a discount code for the World Tour lining. Make sure you check out the Stage 1 podcast for that and some more announcements then as well from Lacole. They have a lot going on with Drops Lacole, some announcements for next year. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to check out their kit, it's at www.lacole.cc. The link is in the description down below. But as I was saying, yeah, Cavania attacks on around the wheel. And it's perfect tactics, as Benji said. Almeida gets to sit in UAE, a, a thrashing behind, trying to chase back for Ulysse. Uh, then eventually Ineos, so they've got Kwiatkowski in the seat. They have Gagan Hart pacing for him. But as I, they get, Cavagno basically launches Honore and he gets onto the flatter section and he's doing so well. He, the guy came third at San Sebastian and, yeah, like he was closer than I thought. I thought he was going to be caught really quickly. Eventually, we saw Almeida launch early. And what did you see from Almeida, Benji? I mean, we, we said he hasn't won before. When we were talking about his transfer, factually correct, he hadn't won before. But <laughs> I saw some like savvy vet moves. Am I ma- imagining that he like yeah, attacked, clever. triggered, and then waited to someone else to – like he baited Morich? Well, he made a bit of a move when Honore was done working just ahead of him. And it was – not that crazy, but it was enough to trigger Mohoric indeed into taking the inside because Almeida went wide, allowing the inside of a, a very, very marginal corner to the line. And Mohoric went into that inside and Almeida just said, okay, I'm on the wheel. And this is what's interesting because this shows the different type of sprints these two have. Mohoric is a type of rider that needs 100 meters of just running towards his sprint to get to a decent sprint speed, while Almeida has that trigger acceleration to get to that speed and jump on a wheel like that and the problem for Mohoric is that on this kind of finish it's going to be very difficult to use his kind of sprint the 100 meter run into a proper sprint speed and then keeping it up to the line and that is basically leaving a lead out for Almeida here and uh yeah it's easy for him he even he could have come past Mohoric earlier but there was a slight left hand bend and he basically edged out to make anyone that wanted to come past him go even wider he sprinted got up to speed and then with 50 minutes left it's like time to cook him and beat Mohoric by over a bike length I think I'll made for his second win in a matter of two days so, so typical like <laughs> one win and the floodgates open yeah. <laughs> every well, time also having like a stage finish that suits him perfectly kind of helps too yeah, okay. as well <laughs> here's the final top 10 almeida first morich second he's still crazy level then drame third kvietkovsky fourth dion smith fifth hindley sixth Ben Tullet on Alps and phoenix young british guy watch out for him he did well at flesh seventh diego ulysses eighth uh, kind of surprised. I thought he was he would do better, frankly. To Barry ninth, and then Quinton Hermans and Gertemai were tenth and eleventh. So I think, yeah, Intermarche had like three guys doing quite well: Rota, Hermans, and Gertemai, but they didn't really pick one of them. It seems to me. In terms of GC, Almeida extends his lead. He's now got eight seconds on Morich. He really frogs back over Ulysses, who's down on third, six seconds behind Morich. Kwiatkowski's on twenty-one. Hindley's up to fifth on thirty-two seconds, same time as Turns. Rota, Aliotti, Ina Rubio, and then Wellens. Tim Wellens, he's not German. Uh, tenth. <laughs> the question I have for you, Benji, is yeah. Dylan Turns, you're the Belgian whisperer. I would have thought these finishes would be suiting him and Morris would be leading him out. That even sort of looked like the plan the other day on the first stage. I yeah, it certainly looked like the plan because Morich was working for him simple as that on the uh, previous stage because he was also he was also working before the climb started when Almeida won his first stage. So it was not only on the final climb, and to still come within that margin that day means that you're much stronger than turns right now. And 
turns seems to have evolved a bit in the sense that I swear Polonia, I don't know, like four, five years ago, Zabze or whatever that finishes with the steep finish uh, that they had in the Tour de Polonia back in the day. Well, turns won that stage, if I recall correctly, at least once. And those kind of finishes certainly fit him. And I think this is just not steep enough because he's the guy with steep percentages being an advantage to him. But he doesn't have the acceleration compared to an Almeida here. And Almeida is just better. And the gradients, I think, are just not high enough for a turns to be better. But I don't think that turns is in an excellent form either, to be honest. But I do want to add that for GC. It might not look like it right now, but there's a guy that is currently sitting in 20 that is so jumping into the top five or top seven or something uh, when the time trial happens on stage six. That's Tiberi, the guy that you mentioned top 10 today, I think, ninth. He's yeah. got an actual time trial. He's a guy that in the UAE tour had that odd crash oh, yeah. over the line. He's a, a decent TT or genuinely, and he can jump into the top 10 in GC definitely after stage six. But there's a few stages beforehand, though, that he needs to conquer first. Before I do the preview of stage five, I just want to, Benji and I, we already mentioned this on the Almeida transfer recap and then in our Bora transfer recap uh, that I'd rather have one Joao Almeida than Hindley, Kelderman, Buchmann and Vlasov. That's my view. I'd rather have one guy who yep. can can win races, has punch, has the prospects of making being a superstar, has TT, almost looks like the full package, just got to finesse the consistency, etc. Then guys with problems with the TT and not so much punch. And when you don't have the punch, you don't have the TT and you're not that consistent either. Like Hindley, you've got to be a damn good climber to be consistently winning at World Tour level uh, in stage races on GC. So looking good for Almeida, I'm sure UAE, I know they're not, I guess, happy with how this week's gone for themselves personally, but they're, uh, they're pretty <laughs> well, happy. With, on. <laughs> the, the guy they just gave a five-year contract to is looking pretty fresh, although it is, you know, not the strongest start list, still good. Tomorrow stage, stage five, another interesting like classic tour of Poland stage, 173 Ks and it's rolly, medium mountain or light medium mountain, frankly, 5 Ks, 5%, 3 Ks, 6%, but with steeper sections in there as well. It's not all regular gradients. And then they finish with a, looks like a Remco Haven. A Every year. Of course, doesn't it? Every year they finish here. <laughs> <laughs> I think Karapaz won here in 2020. I think Kwiatkowski won here in 2018, if I recall correctly. Uh, uh, Mezgech won a sprint here as well, because it's usually a sprint of like a group going yeah. up to this. And it's usually the people that do have that acceleration still, but also the length, because this finish is harder than it looks. It's it's a really proper hill sprint, and it just keeps going and keeps going until the line. So... Wouldn't surprise me if Almeida's in the top three here. <laughs> should but, be the favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would kind of, yeah. The thing is, like, this is the kind of finish where holding on matters. And I think Mohoric's issue so far has been that he has been forced into sprints, well, today, where it wasn't a lengthy sprint. That is going to be a lengthy sprint tomorrow. I think Mohoric might fit just as much as Almeida tomorrow, but I could prove proven to be wrong. Dion Smith, a decent result today on a harder yep. climb. I feel like Dion Smith should be really looking at a top three tomorrow. Good call. Morich, Almeida, of course. I feel like Quickstep might play the Honoré card again. Honoré, of I? course. Well, <laughs> I have I, to. well, I think they should ride for him. He's quicker in terms of top speed than Hermans and Rota. I think Rota's a better climber. But, yeah, it's not so long the finish. I definitely think... Quickstep will play the Cavagna Honoré card again on those rolling climbs, the succession yeah. of four. Uh, but an interesting stage. Again, a long stage. And uh, I think I don't see Almeida losing the Jake jersey. Jake Stewart tomorrow because he was on nine seconds today. True. Yeah, what was he? Nine Aldani seconds. as well on nine seconds. It was on like two sprinters. So Aldani, you can I get over those hills. Okay. I prefer Aldani. Um, Ina Rubio is quite punchy. I think Gonzalo Serrano of Movistar had brought him. But I'm not sure if he's here. He would have been very, very nice on this finish. But yeah, it's, it's one of those interesting finishes where, what about Encorn Benji for Yumbo? On paper, I'd say yes. But the thing is, I want to name someone else right now that is having a wonderful last year, basically. I think he got 
top 40 at La Fleche last year wasn't that perfect, but he started this year with 12th in La Fleche, 17th in Amstel. Those are good results. 7th today, and he's 19. Ben Tollett, British guy, keeps on performing really well on hilly parkours, and he's going to be a guy for the Hill Classics in the in the future if he keeps going, because everybody's talking about Pitcock and so forth, but this guy is doing some magical stuff at a young age. It's funny that Alpes and Phoenix, their Belgian Classics Pro Ponte team, and I don't know whether they've got great scouting or it's just luck. They've like walked into Ben Tullet, Jay Vine, and Tobias <laughs> Bayer. They got three like <laughs> three really good like GC climbing Arden prospects. Um, maybe it's not luck, but yeah, he's not got a contract for next year on paper. But he, he really should. This guy's you know this guy's one for the future, as I said. But that's all from Tour de Polonia stage four. We will try and do uh, the stages recaps after each day before the Vuelta starts, but no promises once the Vuelta starts. We might have to combine a couple.